Hi everyone, it's Roisin from Curiodicy. And for the next couple days, we're gonna be exploring one of my very favorite topics, which is water. Water is so important and so interesting. Our planet is about 71% water, your body is about 60% water, and your brain is 73% water. Water is everywhere, and it's so unique. So we're gonna do a bunch of experiments that you can do at home to help you explore water. In this colorful and fun at-home science experiment, we're gonna learn about how water is sticky. Here's what you're gonna need for this experiment. You need a roll of paper towels. You need three clear containers of any size. You need two colors of food coloring. And you need some water. To get started, put a little bit of food coloring in the two outside containers. I'm just gonna try starting with two drops. Got yellow in this side. And I'm gonna do blue on the other side. Then I'm gonna fill up my two outside containers with food coloring with just a little bit of water, maybe about an inch in each. Next, you just take your paper towel and you tear two small strips off of it. Then you take your two strips and you put them so that one end is in each of the outside containers and the other end of both of your paper towels meet in the middle container like this. What do you think is going to happen? What do you notice? I can see that the water from the Tupperware is starting to climb the paper towel. We'll check back on this experiment in a little while to see how it's going. All right, so it's been about an hour, so I'm checking on my experiment, seeing how it's going. Let's take a closer look. What do you notice? Does this remind you of anything you've seen before? What do you think is gonna happen next? Hey everyone, it's Roisin checking in on day two of my obsession with water experiments. While we wait for this colorful water experiment, I think that I want to set up another experiment that explores the same concept. Here's the super simple setup for our water is sticky part two experiment. You can see that I've got a nice jar of water again. And then I've also gone around the house and found kind of different types of paper. I've got receipt paper, regular paper, precious toilet paper, and some paper towel. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this water and pour it into this container so that the ends of each of those types of paper are just about dipping in the water. What do you think is gonna happen? Once all of the strips of paper are touching the water, you can start to see how the different types of paper suck up water at different rates. The toilet paper and the paper towel seem to suck up water quickly, and that makes sense since that's what they are designed for. On the other hand, the paper and the receipt don't seem to be sucking up much water at all. I mentioned earlier in the video that water is sticky. And what I mean by that is that it sticks to both itself and to other surfaces. Water sticking to other surfaces is called adhesion. 
Adhesion is behind the science that we're seeing in this video. Since water sticks to other surfaces, it starts sticking to the paper towel and the toilet paper especially, and that causes an upward pull on the water. Different types of paper pull on water different amounts. Which type do you think pulls on water the strongest? You can keep experimenting with water adhesion at home. Just take a walk around, look for different materials, and think about how you could test them. Let's get back to our original experiment. Now that we've explored water adhesion a little more, what do you think is going on here? It's been 27 hours now since, this, since I set up this experiment. Let's take a closer look. This might just be the slowest ever way to learn that yellow and blue make green. Of course, this is also a great way to explore adhesion and also capillary action. Capillary action is the tendency of water to climb up narrow spaces because of adhesion, because of the pull from water wanting to stick to the surface. For capillary action to occur, adhesion, that pull, has to overcome. It has to be stronger than cohesion. Let's explore cohesion a little deeper. Try this experiment at home and post your pictures. Show us what colors you made. Now that we've learned about adhesion, water sticking to other surfaces, let's circle back to cohesion, water sticking to itself. Let's dive right in with a fun experiment. All you need is a penny and an eyedropper. How many drops of water do you think you can fit onto a penny? To try this experiment at home, make sure you start with a dry penny and slowly drip water onto the penny. See how many you can fit. Boop, 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 boop. How would you describe the shape that the water is making? Because of water's special structure, it is a polar molecule, which means that it's positive on one end and negative on the other, it actually bonds with itself, creating surface tension. Surface tension, the water sticking to itself and creating a film is really what creates that bubble shape. And it helps to explain why you can fit so much water onto a penny. We're gonna take a quick pause here because I noticed something very cool. Let's catch a quick freeze frame of that. Oh boy, my favorite part of science, questions leading to more questions. Let's investigate this further. Do you have any ideas? To explore this more, I have a challenge for you from Curiosity. Grab a glass of water and your dropper. Slowly drip drops of water onto the surface. Can you get any to hang on the surface? Okay, after a lot of practice, here's what we could do. Let's make that slow-mo even slower. This phenomenon is called a coalescence cascade, and it works for a lot of the same reasons that our penny works. When the water hits the surface, because there's surface tension there, the water droplet actually bounces. When it hits the surface again, just a little bit of it breaks through before the water droplet heals, rebonds together. And that keeps happening. You keep having smaller and smaller drops left over until all of the water is taken in by the surface. Okay, so we've talked about how water is sticky. It sticks to itself, adhesion, and it sticks to other surfaces, cohesion. Now I wanna explore another thing that makes water really cool and really special. Let's check it out. For this experiment, I'm going to put exactly a quarter cup of water in each of these three small glass jars. I'm also just gonna use a Sharpie to mark where the water level is on the outside of the jars. 
Okay, now two go in the freezer, and I'm gonna leave one out on the counter as our control, our one where we don't really change anything at all. Of course, I'm gonna wipe up the spill, and I also wanna take a second to show you my cool flannel paper towels. Okay, well, I guess if they're flannel, they're by definition not paper towels, but I use them as paper towels, and they work great, and they are reusable. So it's been just about 20 minutes or so, and I'm gonna pull one of my jars out of the freezer and check on it. Even though this water hasn't been in there for very long, it's still cooled down a lot. Check out the water line. Remember, it used to come right up to that purple line. How about now? Okay, so the water took up less space when we cooled it down. That makes sense, actually, if you think about how molecules move and how they take up space. And to do that, I'm going to rely on the stack that smiles back, but we'll get right back to that. A molecule is the basic building block of life. It makes up almost everything around you right now. It's the smallest part of something that keeps all the same properties as the thing itself. Water molecules are extra super special. They are made up of one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. And they kind of form a shape a little bit like a goldfish. So let's say that the goldfish's face is that one big oxygen atom and the two points of its tail, those are gonna be our two hydrogen atoms. Because of this special goldfish-like shape, I mentioned before, water molecules are polar. That means that they're positive on one end, the hydrogen end, or in the case of our goldfish, the tail, and negative on the other end, the head of our goldfish or oxygen side. So when, our, when molecules are in a solid, something with a basic shape, they're pretty close together, not taking up much space and maybe kind of vibrating in place. As you heat those molecules up, they start to move more, start to flow, take, start to take up more space. Maybe they turn into a liquid. Add even more heat, those molecules take up even more space and move even faster, then you have a gas. So far, our findings in the water in the freezer experiment make sense with that. When we put the jar of water in the freezer and then checked it 20 minutes later, the water level had dropped. The water molecules were taking up less space. So we would expect then that the jar that stayed in the freezer for a longer amount of time would take up even less space, right? The water level would be even lower. Let's test that theory. All right, ready for the big reveal? Ta-da! How is our water line looking? It is higher. Our water line is higher. Even though the water got even colder, it's taking up more space. Let's turn back to our goldfish to understand that. This all goes back to how special water is because of the shape of its molecule, that goldfish-like shape. I mentioned that it's polar. The head end is negative and the tail end is positive. Have you experimented with magnets before? Or maybe at least the phrase that opposites attract? The negative and the positive ends attract each other. And that means that as those molecules get closer and closer, those negative and positive forces actually make them freeze into this really special crystal structure with a lot of airspace in it. Which means that as a solid, because it is polar, water takes up more space. Water does actually take up less space as you cool it down. We saw that with our first jar that we took out of the freezer after just about 20 minutes. 
it started cooling down and it started taking up less space. Look, you can even see that it re-expanded. This now has been sitting out for an hour and it's gone right back up to that purple line. Water only contracts down to about four degrees Celsius. At about four degrees Celsius, it starts to go the other way. It starts to expand as that crystal structure starts to form. And that's when you get ice, which takes up more space. Now that we've done that experiment and learned a little bit about how unique water molecules are, I wanna do something that's just pretty cool. And if you ever wanted to learn how to crush a can with science, Curiosity is here to help. I've got all my supplies together here. You can see I have a small pot of boiling water. I have a Tupperware with some ice water in it, and I'll top it off with a little more ice to make sure it's really cold. Then I've got a can here, just a regular ordinary can. There's nothing in it, maybe a drip of water. Yeah, got our can. I'm gonna use these tongs to make sure I don't burn my hands. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a tiny bit of water into the can. Maybe teaspoon, tablespoon, somewhere in that ballpark. Okay, then I'm gonna hold the can with my tongs. I'm gonna hold it down in the boiling water. The reason that I'm doing this is because I want to boil the water that is inside of the can. Have you heard of boiling before? Liquids boil when they turn into a gas. So we always think of a boiling pot of water when that water is turning into water vapor, but other things boil too, and they boil at different temperatures. So right now I'm waiting for that water inside of the can to boil. As it boils, it's turning into a gas and as a gas, it takes up a lot more room than it does as a liquid. So it's expanding, it's filling the can, and it's even escaping out the top, that water vapor. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Ta-da! One crushed can, courtesy of science. But let's check out what that looks like in slow motion. Like I mentioned earlier, that water boiling inside of the can expands and take, takes up a lot more space than it does when it's liquid water. When it expands, some of it escapes out the top, which means that there is less water in the can than there was originally. When you flip the can upside down into the water, you both seal the exit and you also rapidly cool the water that is inside there so that it wants to condense back into liquid water, which takes up less space. And that is what crushes the can. Do you want to see some evidence? This time, check out the water line. Did you catch that? Let's watch it one more time. Did you see the water level drop? That's good evidence for what's going on here. Like I mentioned, when you dunk the can in cold water, that water vapor quickly cools down and condenses into liquid water, which takes up a lot less space than water vapor that causes a sudden drop in pressure. And that sucks water up into the can. It also helps explain why the can crushed. Since there's low pressure inside of the can, the pressure outside of the can is relatively high, and that causes a squeeze on the can, causing it to crush. I hope you enjoyed learning about pressure, phase changes, and also just having fun crushing a can with science. Stay tuned for more videos that will help you explore science at home. All right, well, thanks for experimenting with me today all about water. I hope you keep the experiments up at home. There are so many ideas out there to explore water. For example, can you get a paper clip to float on water? Keep checking back for more videos, and for now, 
Happy experimenting. Cheers.